We're gonna build a $5,000 computer for editing and stuff like that in just a minute, but first I'm gonna flay all these papers around. So Evan sent me an email. He wants um, a computer to do lots of editing. He does everything from programming to Adobe After Effects and Premiere, does some 3D modeling and whatnot. But he has AMD cards right now and he wants to take advantage of CUDA uh, for Windows. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put together a system for him. We might even build it here, so I think Evan's going to send the parts over. We've been talking to him, so that's pretty cool. But in the meantime, I wanted to share with you guys what we put together for him for like a $5,000 epic, mostly for editing, rig. So starting off, we are going uh, with the Socket 2011 Core i7-3930K. It's a 6-core running at 3.2 gigahertz, and this thing's still expensive, and the price-to-performance ratio is not so hot. But you can overclock it quite a bit. And it's also, you know, you have six cores and the per core performance is just insane. And I love Socket 2011. You get, you know, four channels of memory support. It's just, it's just epic. You can do so much with Sandy Bridge E. And I think we've got Ivy Bridge E coming up pretty soon, fellas. So that's going to be nice. And ladies. Um, now for the cooler. We're going all out. We're going to get the NZXT Kraken X60. You have a dual 140 millimeter fans on this. It's kind of like... Think about the Corsair H100, but it looks a little crazier. I mean, the H100i is also a very, very good option. So either one of those, you know, that are in your price range, take a look at it. This one's like 140. It's new, and it looks like it's going to be very good. We'll have one of those in to test soon, won't we, in ZXT? Won't we? Now for the motherboard. I really like the uh, the workstation motherboard, the P9X79. And uh, there's several different varieties that have several different options. Uh, we're going to grab the P, uh, P9X79 Deluxe. And that one has less of the 6 gigabit per second SATA ports, but we're going to go with the RAID card, so that'll make up for that. Uh, other than that, it's got everything else we need, and some of the other ones are a little bit too expensive, and I'm going to put the money into another place. So that one does have three 16-speed PCI Express slots. If you're running multiple cards, it runs at 16, 16, 8. And uh, like I said, it only has two of the 6 gigabit per second SATA, but you also have um, quad channel memory on this, and it's just fancy stuff. DigiVRMs from, from Asus, so everything runs nice and even. Now, for the memory, this motherboard does support 64 gigabytes of memory. And Evan did mention that he was just tired of, uh, you know, his memory always filling up. So we're going to grab 64 gigabytes of the Kingston Beast. Now, we got some Beast in. We're going to be testing that on this board as soon as we get that board in. Uh, yeah, Kingston was nice enough to send us over some, some memory to test. This stuff is ridiculous, and I like the fact that it is, um, it is rated at 2400 megahertz. And that's really going to allow us to push things because... You know, with 2400 megahertz memory, you can push the CPU farther than you normally can. It's just going to be a nice experience. I'm quite looking forward to that. For the stores, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a couple 3 terabyte Seagate Barracuda drives, and I'm going to hook those up to the two onboard 6 gigabit per second um, SATA ports. So there we have, you know, some storage. And you can use RAID if you like. It's going to be up to you. I mean, I'd probably use, I don't know, RAID 1. So, but whatever you want to do. After that, we're going to grab uh, the LSI Mega Raid SAS card, the uh, 9270 uh, 8i. Now, we're going to get the kit, so we have all the cables and everything we need. And that'll support several hard drives. So let's get several hard drives, shall we? We're going to get uh, the OCZ Vertex 4. I'm going to grab four or five of those. And we're just going to run those in, in RAID 0 all day. That's going to be um, of the 256 gigabyte flavor. Those are 200 bucks a piece. Um, also, keep an eye out for the Kingston HyperX 3K. If that one is around the same price, it's really, really fast. Um, so either one of those would be just fine. I also like the A Data SX900. So just check the prices on the 256 gigabyte versions of all of those and whichever one looks good, you can grab, but grab like four or five of those and run those in RAID 0. I mean, it's gonna make editing fly, it's gonna make rendering go a little faster, it's gonna make your OS start up like faster than Jesus on a rocket ship eating a pizza. That is fast. For the video card, now, there's a few different ways we can go. We can either get two GTX 680s, or we can get two GTX 670s. I'm going with two GTX 670s. Um, in total, there's going to be a few less CUDA cores, but the speed is going to be so fast that it's it, it just hurts my head. I mean, you can grab the 680s if you want to. It'll still uh, come out to be under 500 bucks, but either one. And I'm going for the EVGA. Right now, uh, there's some pretty good prices on the Superclocked and the For the Win Edition. Make sure you get the versions that have the backplate if you're going EVGA. I love the backplate. It reduces the temps by like four or five degrees. 
just by having the back plate. Uh, the other thing that's nice about those is um, if you look at the uh, the bracket that comes with them, there's really large exhaust holes on the bracket, and that brings the temperature down as well. So these things are very overclockable, very stable, and I like EVGA's warranty as well, so I'm going all the way with EVGA. If you want to run more than, uh, than just a couple monitors, uh, and you're going to be running SLI for like gaming and all that stuff, you're going to have to turn it on and off, and that gets kind of annoying. What you can do is just get like one extra cheaper card to put it in the third slot, uh, and don't use SLI on that one, and that'll work just fine. So I did that with like actually an AMD card in a system that I was running NVIDIA SLI on. So an NVIDIA SLI and then an AMD like 4650 in there. And that gave me a couple extra monitors to put like in my ears and stuff. So I had some monitors in my ears, guys. It looked pretty hot. I would make out with me with monitors in my ears. Would you not? I made a rhyme and was not aware of the fact. I'm a poet and I did not have any cognitive... I have no idea. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. For the case, I'm going to give you guys some options because the case is sort of objective, but you have to make sure everything fits and runs cool. Uh, my first choice is the Fractal Design Define R4. We've played with this case a lot. We love it. There's plenty of room in there. Uh, you can fit large coolers, lots of fans, and it's really sturdy, well-built, 89 bucks. That's pretty crazy. If you want better airflow, you can grab the NZXT Phantom 820. This thing has lots of options for airflow, like probably some of the best that I've ever seen. There's a bit of plastic on this case um, in comparison to the Fractal Design R4, but it's still really well made. And um, yeah, the, the temps with that case are, are just crazy, but it is like a lot more expensive, like $150 extra on top of the price of the uh, Fractal Design R4. For the power supply, we're going for the good stuff. We're getting the Seasonic X Series, 1250 watt. Uh, this is 80 plus gold certified for 231 bucks. And that is going to run all those hard drives and the graphics cards and everything else. And there's still going to be some power left over for overclocking or maybe another graphics card. But it's really important to have, you know, the 80 plus and this one's gold and the, you know, the quality of the capacitors, the quality of the board. We also have one really strong 12 volt rail to deliver even power all over the system. Last but not least, we need an optical drive. And since this is an editing rig, I wanted to give you uh, something that would allow you to burn uh, Blu-rays because burning a Blu-ray will allow you to, you know, make archives of all your footage and that sort of thing. It's probably over the long run going to be easier to keep 50 Blu-rays in a drawer, you know, for like different photo shoots or different video shoots or whatever you're doing, different animation projects, than it would to keep like a stack of hard drives somewhere. So we're going to go for the Asus BW12B1ST, and I just grabbed the black model. It's a slash BLK slash G slash AS if you want the exact model that I found. Uh, but you can get that on sale for around $55 to $60 in that price range. That's pretty good for a Blu-ray drive. The total with what we've configured in the GTX 670, uh, $4,463.72. If you get the GTX 680, you're still under $5,000, and everybody's happy. But either way you want to go is going to be great. That's going to be a fast system. So, uh, Evan, thanks for the question. Uh, glad we could help you out, and I hope we helped out anybody else out there who's looking to buy an editing rig or put together an editing rig. You can save a lot of money if you do it yourself. I'll see you guys uh, next time. Be sure to subscribe. It's down here. See you later.